All right, we're live. I haven't been here in about two weeks um, because I've been on vacation and I've been like kind of, you know, rejuvenating from being, you know, in the hospital and working with the type of job that I work with for a long time. But I'm doing well now. I'm back. I'm still a little tired, a little kind of jet lagged um, right after I came back from like my overseas trip, I went to a friend's wedding. Um, well, I worked and then I went to a friend's wedding and then I came back like literally the next day. So it's been kind of crazy, but that's not a here nor there. Um, I'm here with you guys today so that we can do uh, a review of LIU's PA program. So I don't remember doing any of the programs in New York so far. Uh, I think this will be the first one, um, but it's one of the top PA programs in New York, from what I understand. So if you are interested in any of these East Coast schools, uh, this would be a good one to look at. So let's get to it. I don't want to like drag this along. Um, I'm going to just share my screen. I hope you guys are doing well. And I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday. All right, let's go to LIU. So hopefully that screen share is up. Let me see. Yeah, great. All right, so this is LIU's um, page. Like when you come in, sorry, you guys, I have like an allergy or something that's going on. It's always with my left nostril. So if I sound a little like nasal, if my eyes are a little watery, that's why. Um, but this is their main page, LIU Brooklyn. Uh, it says Physician Assistant Studies and LIU stands for Long Island University, okay? Um, but it is in Brooklyn. Uh, so they have a Master's of Science in Physician Assistant Studies. Um, I like how they have this kind of laid out here because everything is kind of the main things are right on the front of the page. So accreditation status, we see it right here. Accreditation continued, right? Accreditation continued. And their next, um, like their next review is not until March, 2023. So you have some time before the school is reviewed again. So they're going to have continued uh, accreditation for a little bit. And, um, you know, I always look at the accreditation status and some of you guys have asked me why, and it's just because, you know, I don't want me personally, I didn't necessarily want a school that was on probation or, um, you know, was having like a review within a year or so of me attending, because if they went on probation, um, I just felt like it was a little slippery of a slope um, with respect to my education. So I think that this is something that you should always look at. What is their accreditation status? Another thing that you should look at is their graduating classes. OK, so this is from 2018 to 2020. Um, every year they've had a max class size that they could enter of 42. Um, obviously, it shows here in 2018, they only entered in 41, but the other two years they entered in 42. Um, but the graduates, look at these graduates. And so it's it's consistently gotten better, which is a good thing. But the initial um, 2018 had 35 students of the 41 graduate um, versus 2020, which had 38 of the 42 graduate, uh, which dropped their attrition rate, meaning like the amount of students that they um, lose for various different reasons, and then uh, kind of increase their graduation rate. So that is good. Uh, it looks like they are doing something good. Things are getting better. Um, so that's that's good to hear. Uh, I like this. It just kind of gives you some stats on the PA profession. So ranked number one in best healthcare jobs. What? Is that us? Yes, that's us. <laughs> Rack number, rank number one. Um, our annual like median salary is 104000 per year. Um, again, that's all based, like that's annually and it's a median, but there are people making a whole lot more and there are people making a whole lot less. Well, not like a whole, whole lot, but like a good $20,000 less. So um, you just have to kind of, th this depends on where you're living and, and the kind of specialty that you're getting into. Um, and then this shows you here uh, the various different rotations that they have at their particular program, which is mainly what they have at all PA schools. So if you're not if you're not aware of that, it's typically surgery, emergency medicine, family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, um, women's health, uh, OBGYN, and um, behavioral health medicine. Uh, and those are kind of the core. All right, so we already did accreditation. Let's go head over here to mission. 
Um, so the mission statement, um, the Division of Physician Assistant Studies supports Long Island University's mission through the education of men and women of all ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds in the art of science of medicine. Is that their mission? MS 28. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that is it in medicine in order that they may become competent, compassionate, high quality healthcare providers. Okay. So their, their focus is everyone uh, from all walks of life uh, to become competent, compassionate, high quality healthcare providers. Okay, cool. It's pretty simple. Uh, the goals and outcomes. So they want you to like gain a good medical knowledge. The graduates are expected to meet or exceed the national mean first time pass rate, pass rate for pants. Great. That's nice. That's a good goal slash expectation of your students, but um, definitely make sure, you know, like this is one thing that I want to see like schools kind of promote and it's the, the help and the assistance that they give these students in um meeting or exceeding the national mean first time pants pass, right? Because I, I don't honestly think that like passing the pants on the first time is like the end all be all, the goal that schools should be promoting. And, but that's typically what um, PA programs do because uh, it's kind of like a badge of honor. And for students like myself and many, many other, others who haven't passed the boards on the first time, um, it's really daunting and it's like super fearful and and like very high anxiety um, driven, like trying to meet that expectation. So, yeah, just something to look at. Um, PA students, PA studies, pants, first time. OK, again, just talking about their the pants pass rate. All right, let's go to admissions, what we want to hear about. So students may attend LIU on a part-time or full-time basis. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Uh, so this is the first school that we've talked about that has a part-time option. Um, not many programs have that. And so I think that it's kind of cool uh, for the person that may not be able to be uh, full-time, that you have the option to be part-time or full-time. Okay. Um, direct care experience. So complete a minimum of 500 hours of direct care experience. Um, of these 500, 400 must be completed by the time of your CASPA application submission. So you can have 100 hours outstanding. Um, so I guess like it's, uh, I think the minimum, I, I don't know how they'll gauge this. So I guess really, cause really and truly kind of like the minimum is 400 and not really 500 if you can have a hundred outstanding. But um, it says that by the time of completion, um, like matriculation into the program, you need to have had all 500 hours. So um, that's also like a good, a nice little like pass for students. Um, so there, these, they list out direct patient care experience and you guys know, I love this because like, there's no guessing, right? You know, there's no like, oh, I'm a CNA. Like, does that count? Yes, it counts. Certified nurse assistant. Like this counts towards your direct patient care experience. You know, like, so I, I love this. I love when schools do this. Um, it just makes it so much easier on the pre-PA applicant uh, to know exactly what will be accepted. Like being a scribe, okay? Academics. Obtain at least a baccalaureate degree from an accredited college or university no later than the time of matriculation. Uh, you need to maintain a GPA of 3.0, um, demonstrate acceptable acceptance, uh, all such courses. So you have to get the prerequisite courses and nothing could be in those prerequisite courses can be lower than a C. Um, and then here, these are like the big dog things that they pull out. So one year of general biology with lab, same with general chemistry. Um, then you have to have one semester of human anatomy with lab. And then one semester of human physiology with or without lab. So you can probably take like the anatomy and physiology class in one, I would say, um, and just have one semester of that. And that should, would that be able to kind of um, 
knock out these two courses. Maybe just take like a full year of anatomy and physiology and that will for sure will knock them out. Um, but you can always call the school uh, and talk to one of their admissions counselors to see if one course of like one semester course of anatomy and physiology would knock these both of these requirements out. Um, microbiology and statistics. These are their like main prerequisite requirements. Um, and these are the ones that kind of vary you guys like from school to school. So it's definitely important that you pay attention to that. Uh, okay, so their application is through CASPA, which we know like I'm only doing CASPA participating programs, unless you ask me to do a program that's not participating with CASPA and I, I will do that for you all. But um, we're going through the CASPA list first. Um, their minimum GPA, both science and overall, is a 3.0. They have a seat deposit of $500 um, if you accept it into the program. Is it non-refundable? Um, I'm sure it is. It doesn't say non-refundable here, but typically these seat deposits are non-refundable um, unless you kind of like sometimes it's like, oh, if you enter into the program, then it will be uh, put towards something. But if you don't, then you lose it. Uh, you will have a breadth and, a, uh, and amount of patient care experience. So, you know, like not trying to skate by with the bare minimum 500, you know, have a large breadth of patient care experience. So even if you can get up to like a thousand, which is double what they're asking for, I think that, that would be pretty satisfactory. Um, completion of the coursework, completion of the GRE. So they require the GRE. So, if you did not want to take the GRE, then this school is not for you. But if you're taking it for another program, then uh, go ahead and apply to this program. Uh, and their CASPA application deadline is January 15th. All right. So you guys, you still have time. Um, I haven't really reviewed many schools that have a a deadline that hasn't passed yet. So we're here, we're a little bit early. Like what, what day is it? It's, so you have a month, you're a month away. So if you have like done all the other things, um, you know, get all this stuff in and apply by this Friday, the latest, because it can take anywhere from four to six weeks for CASPA to verify your application. So we wanna make sure that you get that in. Um, it says international students, uh, applicants, are welcome from international graduate graduate students who hold an equivalent of a four-year bachelor's degree. All international and non-native applicants must take the TOEFL examination. The minimum total score accepted is 79. Uh, all international students who attend, you know, come on. Like, I don't know. Like, this is a bit much because, like, for me, I would have been an international student. Do I really need to take the test of English um like as a foreign language like it's not my foreign language right like i speak it uh fluently so uh i don't know if this is just kind of like a mistype um or if they really require all of their international students to take this but uh anyways that would be something else that you would have to pay for and get um if you're an international student but they do accept you so that's good to know uh, and if you guys have any questions or any other schools that you want me to review, please, please, please leave in the comment section um, and I'll go through some of those questions as well. Uh, Clarence, like before I move on, Clarence says, what is your take on some schools not counting CNA experience? You know, I think it's kind of effed up, honestly. Like um, for me, like I was a CNA, that's how I got my experience, uh, my patient care experience. Um, and like, I think that as CNAs, like we get to do a lot, like, you know, not just, you know, seeing like the patient and interacting with the patient and feeding and bathing and doing all those various different things. But at the same time, we get to see like the, our nurses and our physicians and our PAs working with uh, the patients as well. So our breadth of knowledge is, I feel, um, just as good as that of a scribe um, or a phlebotomist, you know, like where you're just drawing blood. So I think that when it comes to them saying like being a CNA doesn't count towards your patient care experience, I think that that's kind of like pretty whack. Um, and I would hope that more schools kind of review that because um, I think CNAs do a lot. Uh, just me. But I may be a little bit biased. <laughs> 
All right, advanced standing policy. Okay, let's see. The Division of PA Studies does not offer advanced standing to any applicants. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm still a little jet lag. Um, technical standards. So again, like you can breeze through these. This is not like anything like super, super important um, to look at unless you feel like you wouldn't meet these technical standards or there may be like a disability or something that you may have um, where uh, one of these may be an issue. But it's always good to kind of look over it health requirements. All students entering into the program must complete and submit the health examination slash vaccination form. Um, I had to do that as well. I had to get like a whole physical, get like all of my vaccines updated and things like that, like my booster. Um, and I think uh, when I was going to rotations, I had to get like Hep, like Hep B, like some of the hepatitis um, vaccinations when I was going into my rotation. So, um, if you're like an anti vaxxer or something like that, you know, PA school might not be for you um, because you are required to get vaccinations not only to enter into PA school, but to then enter into the hospital and, and do your rotations. All right, so they have like a list of all of their various different courses for didactic year. Um, so three semesters of didactic year, which would constitute like your summer, fall, and spring semester. Um, and it shows you all of the courses, which is cool. Let me see. And do they have clinical year? Yep. Here's the clinical year, and it shows you all of um, the courses there. Oh, so you get not only a surgical, um, like, rotation, you get a surgical elective. And they offer three electives in this particular program, which is good because there are schools that only offer one. And so to have three um, electives, it's really cool, um, even though it's kind of like already kind of segregated for you in terms of what area of medicine it has to be in. There's so many things that you can do in terms of the surgical elective that's not just your general surgery. So... I like that. Um, and same with your clinical elective. All right, let's look at their employment policy. The LIU program requires employed PA students to report their employment status and job title responsibilities to the PA program director. PA students will not be permitted to work for the LIU PA program in any capacity during their tenure as students in the PA program. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, they're not like saying, no, you can't work. So, and I guess that makes sense because again, this is a part-time program as well as a full-time program. So for students that are doing this part-time, which I did not see and like how that option would work. Um, so that would be something that needs to be kind of like teased out and, and spoken to the program director or the admission counselor about. But if you're doing it part time, then, you know, you might be working the rest of the time. So you'd need to let them know that. Background checks. Yes, you do get a background check and a drug screening, um, especially for rotations, because you'll be working in like peds and you have to have like a particular like with the fingerprinting and all that stuff background check for for that. So tuition and fees. All right. So this is another link. Okay, so let's see what does it break down like the total. All right, so the estimated total per year, and you would be doing this for two years, is 56 to 60,000 a year. So about 120, um, 112 to 120,000 to go to this program. Um, and you know, you're going to be living in New York, so that's going to be expensive as well. So what is this room and board? Oh, that's the 15,000. So yeah, mm, something to think about. That's a lot of money. It's one of the more expensive programs. Um, but like I said, it's 
from my understanding, it's one of the best programs in New York. All right, and we are going to the faculty and staff. Let's see the faculty and staff. All right, so Miss Kiefer is the interim program director. She's an RN and a PAC. Look at that. She went to nursing school and then became a PA. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It would be nice to see these people's faces. Um, Stephen Duro is their medical director. Mm, I mean, none of this even really matters because you can't even see what anyone looks like, but mm, that would have been cool if we could have. But that was quick. Oh my gosh, we're done. I think that this has been like the quickest that I've done um, a, a school, a program. Like this was really straight and to the point. Um, and they made it kind of easy for us because again, they had um, they had uh, that stuff right in the beginning, right at the top for us. And these are all, look at all these other schools and, and, um, and, and, uh, areas of, of studies in healthcare that they have. So, you know, if PA is not for you, you can do like DPT, an um, MPH, or master's in social work. Um, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to dis like discourage anybody, but I'm just saying there are other options out there as well from this thing. But anyways, that is it for at least this portion of it. Um, if you guys, you know, just have a couple questions for me, we can go through and ask those questions. And then um, I'll do that over the next eight minutes so that we can be done by 7.30. And then you guys can go about your merry business. Um, but, oh, before I get into that, please, you guys, go watch Rave Hope. Um, you know, it's an amazing project that my husband, Aunt, did. And uh, we both produced. Um, and it has, like, medical mysteries and uh you know, obviously a message of hope, hence the name. And so I uh, just want to tell you guys to go see that because it's a really, really good uh, documentary. Um, and then also I will be doing my vlog from my Dubai trip. Um, I started editing it today, so I should have that out and ready for you all by Sunday. Um, I think I'm going to do it like a two part because I have a lot of footage, a lot of, um, you know, just content from that trip. Um, and it was so much fun. So I'm just saying, all right. So Top Dog Killer said, hey, Donna, I just finished my first semester of PA school. What? Nice. Um, just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to apply even with my low GPA. Get it? All right, you guys. See? And what was your GPA? Because you're saying even with your low GPA, but sometimes we like super underestimate ourselves. So tell me what that was. Um, but congratulations. Stay strong. Keep going. You got this. Um, you know, we need more PAs out there in the world. Wow. Okay. So uh, Top Doc said 3.1. And so, yes, um, it's not a low GPA, but it definitely is uh, an average GPA, um, like that at the 3.0 3 um, minimum GPA mark. Um, so yeah, it could be considered kind of low. Um, it's not like obviously below 3.0, but uh, you got it and he made it. And look at that, finished his their first semester with a 3.6. So doing some good things, doing some big things. Um, you know, you got to finish strong. So you still got two semesters to go. Uh, so definitely like keep that same energy that you started with. And um, as long as you make it to that third semester and make it through that third semester, I'm pretty sure it will, it's like smooth sailing uh, for the most part in rotations. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions from anyone? You know, we got four more minutes, six more minutes. If you have any questions for me, now is your time to ask them. All right. I mean, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions. Um, obviously, this will be up. This video will be up on um, YouTube 
on the playlist that has all of the PA programs that I'm doing. And, you know, again, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do the last two just because I was out of the country, but um, I will continue to do these uh, every every week uh, is the goal every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, unless something, you know, happens. All right. Uh, Peter has a question. Peter says, will PA schools take into account me being an athlete and RA through college? I have a 3.5 with one or more semesters to go, and I was told my GPA was low. So a 3.5 is, is not a low GPA by any means. Um, you know, like anything below a 3.0 is a low GPA, and then some might even consider like top docs at um, like a 3.1 or a 3.0 a, a low GPA just because it is like the bare minimum, right? You're the minimum GPA requirement for a lot of programs is a 3.0. So if you have a 3.5, like you're right there, you're, uh, you know, slightly above some of the average GPAs of like 3.3, 3.4. Um, so I, I don't think that that's something that you should really be like super concerned about. Definitely continue on in school and finish it strong, you know, try to boost that 3.5 up as much as you can. Maybe you might be able to get it to like a 3.6 or a 3.57 or something like that. Um, and then apply with all of your extracurriculars. Um, you know, PA schools don't really care too much about like the athlete RA stuff, but definitely if you have um, patient care experience hours that are, you know, 700, 1,000 hours and above, that will look good as well, okay? Um, says, I feel like it could have been higher if I were just a student. Um, and I mean, if you're asked, if you, if a school that you're applying to, Peter says, you know, like, hey, you know, so you're, you have an average or a low GPA, um, you know, in comparison to the students that we typically um allow into our program, you know, why would you say that is, then you can just like use that exact example. You can say, hey, you know, um, I maintain this above average GPA um, and continue to be on like honor roll or whatever dean's list. I don't remember what the various different areas are called. Um, while not only being an athlete, but an RA holding down a job during um, undergrad, um, but I still kept my grades up because I knew that this was the path for me. So just, you can always spin that into a positive. So um, hopefully that helps you. All right, are we at, yeah, we got like two minutes. So if anybody has a, another question, we can ask that and then, um, I am going to be gone until next time. All right. Um, so again, wrap up is a uh, follow me on Instagram at down the PA and on Instagram at get that university. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Be sure to, um, go ahead and check out rave hope on the channel. It's the most recent video that I uploaded as well as stay tuned for next week, Sunday, when I drop my vlog from Dubai. Um, and then you'll have to stay tuned for the part two. Next week, I think I'll probably do like one of the Midwest PA programs because um, I think I've hit all of the other kind of coasts. Um, so I'll do Midwest. And then after that, it's just a f up for, you know, it's like a free for all. It's just whatever schools you ask me to do. Um, but other than that, I am happy that you guys are watching and commenting. Please continue to do so. Leave your comments in the comment section on what schools you want to see next. Um, and I'll, I'll try to remember them, write them down so that we can get those things done. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> oh, not yet. Bye.